Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Emily and I am a toddler teacher doing my second year of teaching. I just wanted to create a channel where I could share all of the things that I've learned in the past two years. Even though I've not been teaching that long, I've certainly learned a lot. And I'm excited to share that, those things with you, the things that I've learned. And I want to share with other educators and teachers um, to kind of just build this awesome community and kind of share the things that I have learned and I like to I love collaborating so I find this as a way of collaborating as well with you guys and other educators so um, I wanted to start this off on my channel um, as a series of like little book reviews that I would read to my children if you do not know which probably you don't this is like one of the first videos I'd be posting um, I am a toddler teacher and I teach the age range of 18 and a half months to three year olds. And I have been doing that, like I said, for the past two years almost. And um, yeah, I absolutely love it. It's a dream, it's my passion. And I love using books to teach my kids in many different ways. So um, don't let their little minds think that they can't grasp something as big as this book that I'm about to share with you guys can teach them. And so, um, let's get into it. Let's just get into our review. Um, also I want to mention at the end of this video, there's going to be an audio reading of the very busy spider that you guys can listen to and use in your own classroom as well. If you would like to do so, there's a timestamp down below. If you're looking to read, um, if you're looking to just listen to the story, there's a timestamp down below for you guys to do so. Um, if you want to add this book to your collection, your classroom collection, you can do so by clicking on the link that's down below. I'm not affiliated with it at all. I just know that it's um, the best price that I found for you guys to pick up the copy of The Very Busy Spider, as you can get a sneak peek of. Um, and I will also have some printables for you guys to use on my teachers, pay teacher stores that goes along with The Very Busy Spider if you want to use it in conjunction with your book or use it on its own, even though you don't have the book. So let's go ahead and jump right into the review. Okay, so I feel like I have to sit a little bit off to the side so I can show you guys the, the book that I'm about to read with you guys or show with you guys and then read it. So my favorite that I'm showing you guys first is the Eric Carle's Very Busy Spider. I absolutely love Eric Carle. He's one of my favorite children's authors. Um, he has so many great books, so many great stories. The, the imagery is so captivating for young minds and it really grasps all of my kids' attention. And to top it off, my kids are obsessed with bugs for some strange reason. Reason they love bugs, like anything bugs, spiders, caterpillars, wink, wink. Um, I wasn't trying to wink. I don't know what this was. <laughs> the Very Hungry Caterpillar is a favorite and it is called by name, specifically requested to be read to them at times. So lo they love bugs. So it's great. And there's animals inside of this. So that's another plus. Kids love animals. So um, yeah, this is a collector's edition. Um, if so, if you do see this, it's nothing super special, but it can help, um, add a little bit of something. This was originally produced by Kohl's Cares. So if you're not familiar with Kohl's Cares, check them out. Um, they sell books like these, this very book for $5 and all the proceeds would go to Kohl's Cares Profit to give money back to children in need and things like that. Um, so they oftentimes do it like quarterly. They'll bring out new books by certain authors or certain types of books and, and different things like that. You can always find a great deal on books. I did actually happen to find this uh, at the thrift store for 50 cents. So obviously I picked it up because I'm not gonna say no. I always buy duplicates of Eric Carle stuff. You can never have enough in my opinion. So let's get on to why I love I, this book so much and how I use this in my classroom. So I love this book because it's Eric Carle. No, I'm just kidding. Um, that is a bonus, but I love this book because of the story behind it. If you really dig deep into why this is a great story to read for kids. And so basically this book talks about this very busy spider spinning her web all day long. And there are many animals that come along and ask for her to basically play with them. And she's too busy. So you'll see from start to finish, throughout this whole story this is her web over here and here are the different animals they're asking this this spider multiple different questions um making their noises as they do so as a class we'll read this together and the horse says nay nay and you'll do that with them 
I'll have it repeat it back to me. If we know the story so well, we don't even have to go over the whole thing, but I am getting a new student in my class soon. So he won't know the story and we as a class are gonna have to teach him how we read this story. But there are many different animals um, throughout this story and we just continuously see a fly as well from the beginning. We'll see this fly um, just kind of throughout the pages and we'll just see the spider going all over the place um, until we get to the very end where she's all done doing her, her web. She catches the pesky fly and then she gets to sleep, basically, is how the story ends. And you might be thinking like, well, that's really simple. It's just a silly story. There's nothing much to it. But the way that I use this book is I teach my kids, even at a very young age, even if they're 18 months old in my class, I still explain it to them just like this. Because I know a two-year-old can grasp it and eventually my 18 month old will grasp it as well. If we work on our shapes, all day, every day, as much as we can, we're gonna get better. We can only get better and better and better. And you'll remember them forever if we just continue talking about our shapes or our colors. Whatever we are maybe struggling with, I pull this book out to re-encourage my students that we will master this because I can see in my two-year-olds that they are frustrated because they don't know the answer. And usually about the 20 month mark for my younger students, they start to get frustrated because a lot of the other kids might know the answers and they're not getting it yet. And I can see frustration and then they literally don't participate in activities. And it's as simple as just telling them, if we do this every day, you're gonna get better and you will learn your shapes or your colors or whatever we're talking about. But I also like to bring this out at the beginning of our school time, um, like our very first week of school as I call it, because we don't really have a break, a summer break for school. We are an education center. Um, so we don't really take a break for summer. Um, we, just keep, we just keep going and we have a school time and we have a summer time, but it's just all school. So. At the back to school week, I like to pull this book out and I say, we one day we are gonna be as good as this spider. And um, you know we are gonna work so hard on our numbers and our colors and our shapes and we're gonna learn all of these things in our Spanish vocabulary. We are going to get there. We're gonna be very, very busy students is how I like to say it. And then halfway through the year, I try and bring this book out again and I say, hey, remember like, you know, we're in a rut, you know, I don't know what it is, but sometimes my kids get in a rut six months into the school year, the school season, and I say to them, like, you know, we need to work hard again. What happened to that? And usually it's like January. They're like, we're out. <laughs> so I brought this book out again and I said, hey, we're going to work hard and we're going to get to our goal and we are going to learn all of our colors. Don't worry because I have a few that are kind of like, they're really trying and they're not really, they're not getting it yet, but I know that they will. I know that they will. And then at the end of the school year, I'll say, hey, remember when we first started? You didn't know any of your shapes. You didn't know any of your numbers. You knew none of your colors, no Spanish words, nothing. And look at you now, you were very, very busy students and you know all of this stuff that we've worked so hard on. So just like the spider that worked all day long and she didn't get to play with any of her friends, she still built this, this web. And even though we don't get to play a lot at school, we get to play just enough, we're gonna be so smart in the end that it was all worth it. And so that really, I feel like, motivates my kids to want to do more and I can see that progress once we read this story. And after the rut in January, once we read this story, we started up again and the Spanish words started coming out and they started remembering their colors um, and their shapes and all these things and it started coming back their old knowledge started coming back after that Christmas blah and the New Year blah. It really started to come back. And so I believe that I was able to do that and push that to them by using The Very Busy Spider by Eric Carle. And so that's why I love it. That's why, that's how I use it in my classroom. It can of course always be a silly story. It does not have to be serious like this. Um, and, but I like to have those moments in my classroom because I like to motivate my students to want to do better and to understand that their purpose here is not to just sit and play and just 
act up and act out, their purpose is to learn and show their mommies and daddies what they can do and things like that and just get better. So I really find that it motivates my kids and they work a lot harder. I can grasp their attention for longer, longer amounts of time. I'm not saying like every day is perfect at once you read this book and it's life changing, not at all. But I think if you push it to your kids in the right way, it can be very motivational and leave it out, leave it up on, on top of something to have out as a display. And if people are struggling, are we being very busy students? No. Okay. We need to be very busy students so we can be like the very busy spider and learn. And then they'll be like, okay, we want to be like the busy spider. And then they'll be like, they'll, they'll be focused and they'll be ready to go. So if you guys want to add this to your classroom library and use it in the ways that I use it. The link to get your own copy is down below. If you want to add, uh, use things and that are similar to the lesson that I kind of talked about today, it's going to be in my teachers pay teachers linked down below. You can get the resources, the printables to go in conjunction with the story, or just use it on your own without the book. If you don't have it yet, um, no rush on the book. But if you'd like to listen to a reading of the very busy spider, just keep on listening. The Very Busy Spider by Eric Carle. Early one morning, the wind blew a spider across the field. A thin, silky thread trailed from her body. The spider landed on a fence post near a farmyard and began to spin a web with her silky thread. Nay, nay, said the horse. Want to go for a ride? The spider didn't answer. She was very busy spinning her web. Moo, moo, said the cow. Want to eat some grass? The spider didn't answer. She was very busy spinning her web. Ba, ba, bleated the sheep. Want to run in the meadow? The spider didn't answer. She was very busy spinning her web. Ma, ma, said the goat. Want to jump on the rocks? The spider didn't answer. She was very busy spinning her web. Oink. Oink, grunted the pig. Want to roll in the mud? The spider didn't answer. She was very busy spinning her web. Woof, woof, barked the dog. Want to chase a cat? The spider didn't answer. She was very busy spinning her web. Meow, meow, cried the cat. Want to take a nap? The spider didn't answer. She was very busy spinning her web. Quack, quack, called the duck. Want to go for a swim? The spider didn't answer. She had now finished her web. Cock-a-doodle-doo, crowed the rooster. Want to catch a pesty fly? And the spider caught the fly in her web, just like that. Who, who, asked the owl, who built this beautiful web? The spider didn't answer. She had fallen asleep. It had been a very, very busy day. The end.